Jesus' name. Let's have a word of prayer. Amen. Amen. Don Staley, why don't you just stand up and lead us in the word of prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we are so thankful to be here today and worship you. You are our only God, and we look forward to this so much each year. Uh, thank you to put each of you, put God in each of our hearts and, and work with God. Uh, we ask that you be with us for the rest of this day and, and uh, just bless us and, and with your presence. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. You guys are really great. I just, and, and, uh, hopefully you got to see my wife, Sheila. She's right there. I met her on a blind date at this event. I was a, a junior. She was a sophomore. And uh, I was very scared of girls because I, I stutter so bad. And it, it's hard to stutter and cool and be cool. <laughs> so I was very cool. And, and uh, I met her. And as soon as I saw her, I she was gorgeous. And, and, and I thought, hey, I'm out of my league. I don't have a chance here. And then after I got to know a little bit, she was godly and loved the Lord. And, and, but uh, in the sovereignty of God, which is amazing, her major was speech therapy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> cool. so I, I married my speech therapist. <laughs> but um, people are, uh, we're going to um, just, uh, 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 in conclusion, I, uh, after all the stuff we've, uh, we've had, I want to give you uh, 10 things, 10 phrases, 10 thoughts. Each one, uh, obviously, uh, represents an idea, which is uh, 10 phrases, and, and, and I really don't have a good uh, 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 <coughs> What are all these, uh, this, um, all of them have an idea that as we leave this place, we go back home as uh, it may be a challenge. And, and uh, here's number one. This first idea, first thought, first phrase is, here's the phrase. And of course, I'll say the phrase, and then uh, probably I'll have to uh, explain if you know exactly what I mean by it. But here's the phrase. <clears throat> Make a memory. Make a memory. Or the idea, these are great Days. It's the idea, the idea in the Bible that uh, uh, I'm going to redeem the time. I'm making this day account for Jesus. That's the idea. You know, uh, you consider just just uh, where we are. Uh, you can build a case, I guess, in one sense that uh, we are living in the greatest time in the history of the world. I guess you can also build a case we're living at the actual at, at, at the absolute worst time in the history of the world. But in one sense, it doesn't matter. That's right. Because it's our time. That's right. Yeah. And the sovereignty of God, He has us here. And men, we're the men. We're the leaders. And then the fact that this is my moment. And it's a huge moment. And, and, and yes, the enemy is powerful. Yes, the world is crazy. Yes, all this stuff. But you know what? It, it may be like there's never been a greater need in the history of the world for a man to be the man God has called him to be. And to step up and do, and do what a man's supposed to do. And true, people hate us for doing that. People don't understand a lot of we're doing that. People are totally against that. But, but, but still, same Jesus. Always been the same Jesus. Always has. Always will be. He's Lord, he's in control. I believe that, and I'm going to live like that. This is our time. And, and the tragedy is, the, the tragedy is too many men get so wrapped up in stuff, and we miss or compromise or settle for less in this moment instead of maximizing this moment. You know, we start thinking, hey, things are bad in my life. Things aren't, I'm going, I will it work. And so we end up uh, just, just, uh, our, our, it just isn't a, a, a good there. Things were a mess, and so I'm there for six months. So for six months, I'm 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 I got a bad spirit at home. I got a negative influence around my kids, and I'm I'm unhappy. I'm I'm pissed all the time. I'm mad at everything. So, hey, you've missed six months to be the man God wants you to be, 
And it wasn't, it don't matter what's going on in my life. I still got to be with God's call me. I want to honor him and love Jesus. And it don't be a positive witness on my kids. It, it, and so often, <clears throat> we have this idea, you know, I'm, I, I want to be something out there someplace, sometime. And we're never satisfied where we are now. Always want for something else. And we miss the whole power we have of where we are right now. Yeah. You know, maybe you're in the best place in your life. Well, praise God. Rejoice. Honor Him there. Maybe in the worst place you've ever been in your life. But hey, it doesn't change. I need to uh, praise God, honor Him, and be very strong. Because in the midst of where I am, and the sovereignty of God, I saw him. Uh, he, he uh, allowed me to, to get here. And, and you know what? He's going to do something in me while I'm here. <coughs> and he's going to do something through me while I'm here. And often some of the greatest things, in fact, you know what? God, David, found this out in the uh, Bible. Of, uh, he was being pursued by Saul, and he's, he's, he's all, going all over the place. Psalm 63 is a good example of this. David, David found out that God sometimes does his best work in a cave. The man who's got nothing else. He's been pursued by everybody that's important in his life. Hates him and wants him dead. And, and all he had was God. Uh, like Moses. He's got nothing else. Uh, he's on the backside of nowhere. Attending his father in law's sheep. And all of a sudden he meets in a burning bush. Almighty God. He discovered there, that's all I need, just that moment. You know, I can, I can, uh, just the, the, this whole idea, I'm actually not the most, the moment of enjoyment. I knew when I was in seminary, you know, I'm, 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 uh, I'm following God's call in my life, and I, I want to be faithful to what He wants me to do, and I'm, but I'm thinking, man, He can't use me, there's no way. I, I don't talk to Him about this, but I don't know how to struggle with that stuff. I'm surrounded by guys in seminary. Good young preacher, uh, preacher uh, pastor in churches. I mean, I, and I, and I, and I, it's not very big. It ain't gonna I joined First Baptist Church Unis, where Jimmy Drake was the pastor uh, back in the 70s and all of this. He was a great preacher, great church, powerful worship, great. Every Sunday, give an invitation. And the men would stand up at the front, you know, all these ministers would see people. I mean, it was a lie, dynamic. I'm sitting up here just to come. That wouldn't be awesome. If I could be maybe one of those guys at a church like this who stand down front and just receive, because I'm thinking they can have me food because I can't talk. <clears throat> There's not a place out there for me. Of course, now I'm on a church. I'm on staff for a pretty good church. And I am one of those guys who stands down front. I mean, I stand right smack out in the middle of our sanctuary. I receive. What's happened there? Uh, all of my dreams have been fulfilled in one sense. I never, I never imagined I would be here. The tragedy is sometimes I get so overwhelmed with stuff and just things going on and just tough things. Maybe now I'm feeling mm -hmm. my knees. I've had both knees in place, both hips in place, and just the struggle and stuff. And sometimes I can actually be in that position, do what I've dreamed of doing, and just have the worst spirit imaginable. Mm -hmm. you know? Just be down to feed it, thinking, now oh, I'm down. I have people, you know. A minister would be fine if there weren't so many people involved. <laughs> oh, John Day guy. I mean, hey, you miss, you miss, you miss the moment where God has me to be right now. You know, don't don't minimize your moment, whatever your moment is. Good, bad, or ugly. I'm making a memory. I'm making this good. You know what, ultimately? I want my kids. You know, I want my kids. I remember one that time I was going through a stretch. Melissa was in high school, my second daughter, and I'm, you know, I, 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 I guess I was a little depressed with the house about something, but we're, it was a holiday, we're doing something, I'm, I'm, I'm making my, my salsa thing I'm making, I'm in there, and Melissa's helping me, she said, hey, Dad, man, you're really fun today. <laughs> and I said, what? Said, yeah, you've been a little down the last little bit. I'm like, you know, hey, that's not how I want to be. I'm sure that's not how... I want my daughter to even perceive of me. You know, I want to make make our family make uh, uh, make some meaningful moments in our life, regardless of what's going on in my life. Now, I want to get them for a short while. But they're gone. Make them. Here's number two. I got to run. Here's number two. Fall in love. That's the phrase. Fall in love.
Paul in Titans 3.14 says, But all things have been put on love. This is the perfect bond of unity. Fall in love. You know what I mean by that? Fall in love all over again with Jesus Christ as my Savior. Yeah. Fall in love all over again with Sheila as my wife. Fall in love all over again with who I am in Christ. Fall in love all over again where I am in Christ. And fall in love all over again with, with, uh, with uh, uh, my church, my pastor. You know, it's, it's the idea. All of us start out uh, in marriage. You know, you start out, I mean, we first get, uh, first pursuing our wives. I mean, it is, it is sappy. I mean, it's, it's sick. <laughs> Syrupy. I mean, you're listening to everything she says. You, 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 can't, you can't get enough of just her talking. And you love to hear her talk. And you love to watch her mouth the way it works. And you're just looking at her. You just, you just want to be with her. I mean, a little lady, with Mike and Sharon, and, and Mike is, is, is right here cheering for her. I'm a fifth group, but I'm, going, I'm saying this stuff. And, this and Mike was just, I mean, he was just. He was so looking at the school. <laughs> now I'm thinking to myself, again, I'm doing the vows, but I'm thinking to myself, oh, this is sappy. Right, <laughs> this is, this is surfy, sappy, sick. Well, well, that's one end of the extreme. The other end of the extreme is an elderly couple sitting at a restaurant at a table in the corner. Obviously got money. Spend the whole evening eating a big old fancy meal. And they never talk. There's no laughter. There's no interaction almost at all. That's crusty. Still committed, still with one another. You know what? Here's the point. If I got a choice between sappy, syrupy, sicky love or crusty love, I'm going with sappy. Amen. Amen. Man, I want to go back to that. I don't want to be a, an, 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 an old fart. <laughs> man, hey, that is an incredible temptation, man, to be that. You know what? I find myself at times, and I've done something or didn't respond the way I should have, Just and I realize, you know what? Hey, that's what an old fart does. An old, an old man that's just, just stuck and just stick and just, he's ugly and he has a negative... Uh, he has a pasta that just gets on everybody. I'm a good guy. Man, you know, the wheat. <laughs> I first fell in love with Jesus. And you remember how just oh, oh, how overwhelmed you were in love with him? You could spend 30 years later and just all of a sudden it's cold, the fire's gone. And you still go to church. Man, that passion is out there. God, I want that passion. Like, like Tony said the other day, when he first got saved, he was doing so many ministry things, he didn't even remember eating. Just going from one to the other, and just, I mean, just so excited, so pumped. Do you know, I want to go back. You know what? Then you get married with a woman at first, and you do everything with her, everything for her. Just so attentive, so, so, so loving, so kind. I would never dream of, of ever saying a word that offended her at all. And anyway, and after 30, 40 years, all of a sudden, man, just never listening to her. Never just. Walking up to her and just stroking her the way we used to, and just holding her and just just doing all that stuff. You know what? Hey, God, I want to fall in love all over again with with Jesus as my Savior and Sheila as my wife and my kids. And you know what? I want to fall in love with me because mm -hmm. uh, the Bible says, "Hey, uh, Jesus, if you love the Lord, you got to fall in love with me." And man, you love your neighbor. How? As I said, I think uh, uh, earlier, I've spent most of my life wanting to be like somebody else. And that's an awesome thing to discover who I am. Christ. That's all I want to be. Now, I don't have to be famous or whatever. I just want to be faithful to what God has me to do. I want to fall in love all over again. A three. Okay. I want to touch a tear. Touch, touch a tear. You know what I mean by that? Is there anything in my life I feel so strongly about, so deeply about, so moved by, so ingrained in me so uh, so something so deeply that just sometimes that thought or that experience just so overwhelms me it moves me to tears. I just cry. You know what? Um, 
It used to be real men don't cry. Real men who feel deeply about things, they cry. Now, I'm a little, I'm a, I'm a wimp. And I, I admit that. I'm, I, I, and I, I still feel good about myself. I, mean, I don't, I cry easy. You know what? I cry, I cry at, at a national anthem. Yeah. It's being played. Yeah. I cry just, just see those soldiers stand up and salute. Oh, you know what? Now, I never served. I'm, I'm almost, I'm, just, I'm, I'm kind of ashamed of that. That I never did that. I mean, so I've read. I've read about as much as you can read about war, about World War II, about the Civil War, about, about uh, flags of our fathers, that you were know what those guys did there. I mean, I, I know what those guys did. I know the sacrifice paid. I know. I mean, I, 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 I just see all this, just knowing this, just seeing guys here who, uh, uh, who served. There's a guy here, uh, he's going back in a couple of weeks. I mean, it just, uh, hopefully, we let our country enough, it's already time, but it's all the way we're telling the America. And the sacrifices that men have made all over the world on our behalf. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I, I um, hope I never get over having a, have, or uh, hope I never end up having just a cold heart Amen. that nothing can get into to make you cry. You know, you know uh, I'm excited that I still to cry just, I've seen a man get saved. Yeah. Hope I never get over that. Amen. Hope I never know that I got saved. Amen. And that and that and that he changed my life. And see someone, that's why I love it. Our church, we give an invitation. I just love that. And 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 some people in our church leave, and I understand they don't understand. Man, that's the moment when things happen. People lives come forward. And it's, it's awesome. You know, I just uh, that's something. Jesus was in Jerusalem. He was moved with compassion because he saw a man that he lost. Now, someone who's just swooped them unto me and having me saved and don't grant they rejected me anyway. Just grace out of a friend, Lazarus. He saw the devastation that sin had called, the rebellion against the God had called, which caused disease and all that stuff, and the death. He says he wept. Jesus wept. You know what? I hope it at, at times I am so in love with Sheila and so around. That you know what, at, at times I can just look at her and just almost remove the tears and think, all she's done for me, how much she loved me. Nobody loves me how much she loved me. And I realize at times I can be so unlovable. Now, uh, you know what, I've I got grandkids now. I got six of them. And I, I mean, I cry regularly. Uh, I love their, uh, my kids. I mean, I, I love them well, but uh, I don't understand there's a whole other dimension how much I love them. Mm -hmm. Lydia and Luke. Leah and Lucy and uh, uh, Sadie and Georgia. I, mean, I just I hold them all the time and just cry. I love them so much. Well, that's 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 uh, one of the uh, you know I just remember I cry at commercials all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one commercial that this is history again. I, I was it's a stupid commercial, but it's stupid, but it's stupid. But I cry at this commercial. But just when they uh, <laughs> you know I'll be sitting there watching the game and, and the kids are watching it with me. And, they're going, I'm kind of tearing up. And they say, Dad, are you crying? <laughs> well, they, uh, one commercial during the Olympics a couple of years ago, and, and the US, it, 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 it's the scene of the US soccer team, girls' soccer team, walking through the airport late at night, and there's nobody, there's nobody there. Nobody. Just the, the, the uniforms. Walking, it's dark, there's some lights on every place. And there's a janitor guy over there sweeping the floor. And he's all by himself, big old black guy. Sweeping the floor, also he looks up and he sees the United States soccer team. I'm sorry, the he just stops, starts going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love that. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> I've touched dinner before, real quick. You gotta hurry. Dinner before. I'm gonna be on time for this one. I haven't been on time yet, but this, I, I, I'm finishing the dinner before this one. Dinner before. Preach the word. That's the first thing before, too. You know, preach the word. In season, out of season. Exhort, encourage. Just. Be a man who knows the word. Man, uh, that's, it's, if, if this book is what it is, that we believe it is, man, I need to be studying it, reading it, memorizing it, applying it in my heart. I mean, the Bible says, Thy word of thy head and heart, that might not sin against thee. Keeps his purity, keeps it alive. It is. And you know what? I'm just, 
just it's it, it, this book, the powers in this book, by the spirit in this book, through this book. Uh, I need to, and Ezra, as a good illustration, Ezra uh, 7 10, Ezra chapter 7. Ezra, Ezra says this. Here's his philosophy. He said, Hey, I am going to study the word of God for myself. I'm going to live it in my own life. And three, I'm going to teach those precepts to my children. I'm going to study it. I'm going to live it. I'm going to teach it. That's a pretty good deal. You know, I love how uh, <coughs> the car guys, you know, I don't know much about cars, but there's a, there's a, um, a place you can go, a uh, car parts store, and I've been fascinated with this. Stuff. You can walk into the that place and ask about any car or any car ever made this about. What's amazing, the guy behind and the camera knows what you need. Or if he doesn't know, he's got this big book right over there. And all he does, he goes to the book, I mean in seconds, he finds here's what you need and here's where it is. So it's on all three of it. Unbelievable. Well you know what? That's how we ought to be, man. Yeah. It's, it's like, we know the book. We're studying the book. And if we don't know the answer, <clears throat> my son has a question. Hopefully, hey, so here's what the Bible says about this. Or if I don't know, I said, hey, there's something in the Bible about this stuff. We're going to find this thing and see what it says. I, I go, we got to know the book. We've got to memorize the book. I'll preach the word. That's the point. I'm going to do this. This is fire, real quick. Take a knee. Take a knee. Take a knee. Because I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. I've got a whole uh, illustration about that, but you know, just about. You know, at the end of a game, what do you do when you're ahead? And just, and just seconds are left. Mm -hmm. You take it, you don't snap the ball. 1996, we were playing, Baby was playing a, a UNLV. Of course, we were awful back then. Everybody was killing us. We, but we were beating UNLV. Uh, about four points. 21-25. Uh, we were ahead. Uh, last drive, we, we're driving up. I mean, we're down in the line of scrimmage. We never done that. We're running the ball five, six, eight yards at the top. I mean, the whole stadium is getting up. We're going to win this game, and we're going to make a statement in this last drive. We're going to drive, and it's going to be awesome. Well, we get on the sixth yard line. No, uh, yeah, yeah. Sixth yard line, we're going to score. We're in the huddle. And, and I, what you do, I mean, you down the ball. But <clears> when got caught up in this thing, hey, we're going to score another touchdown, just ram it down the throat and make a statement that Baylor University is back. Well, we make the huddle go up, and actually, we snap the ball with eight seconds left. <clears throat> the guy hits the ball, that uh, ends the fullback, he goes down, huge hole. He breaks through the hole, hits uh, a linebacker, hits him, stands him up, uh -oh. spins him around, someone strips the ball, the yeah. ball falls to the ground, goes six yards deep in the end zone. Their free safety picks up the ball, goes to the sideline, goes 106 yards the other way for a touchdown, we uh -oh. lose the game. Uh -oh. Worst experience of my life. I'm now I'm sitting there giving it surreal. Of course, the point is, if you take a knee, win the game. Oh, man, that's true in life. You take a knee. You pray. That's where the power is. And then here, here's, here's the point. You know what, man? God gave you a voice as a man. Amen. Voice of authority. Voice of, of leadership. I mean, a voice of all kinds of things. But you know what? Those people in your life need to hear you with the voice God gave you praying on their behalf out loud. Your wife needs to hear you pray in that same voice that talks to her, that encourages her, that needs to correct her, whatever, but that, but that your wife needs to hear her man with his voice <laughs> say it out loud, praying to God on her behalf. And I was thinking last night of, of uh, what's the face back there? Uh, uh, Philip. No. <laughs> Who was praying last night at the at the uh, bonfire? At the end? I mean, I mean, he's got a big, booming voice, right? I mean, it booms! You know, I, 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 I understand. Man, how awesome it was to hear him pray out loud. I mean, I was blessed by that. Just a guy crying out his heart to God. It was awesome to hear that powerful voice, boom! Well, you know what? Satan needs to hear that yes. out loud. Amen. That's why I need to pray out loud as a man. Come on. And then my wife needs to hear me pray out loud. My kids need to hear their dad pray on behalf of those kids. Amen. You know what? Heaven needs to hear me pray out loud. We need to pray.
pray for wives, men. Because most men are just, uh, in a sense, uh, afraid to pray for a wife. And obviously, most of most of feel like she's more spiritual than She's more this, more that. But hey, I'm still the leader. It don't matter how stupid I am. <laughs> I, I still be praying out with my wife. Uh, even if I have to do this, uh, even if I do nothing else but tonight, when I get on, I'm going to hold her in bed and say, honey, let me pray for you. She said, what? You never pray. I don't know, but, but I'm going to start praying for you. <laughs> and if you, uh, uh, if she, if you said nothing else but, hey, Lord, you know I'm an idiot. I know I'm an idiot. And Lord, she knows I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but Lord, all I want to do is this idiot wants to pray to you for half a month. Amen. And I don't even know what to ask or say, but God, I want you to, I want her to know how much I love her. Amen. Even for all the stupid things I do, several things I do, and just, just help her know I love her. And have her do that, man. And God bless her. Give her rest, like, let her sleep, like, Sweet sleep. I mean, just you know, it, it don't. I care. It, it don't matter. Like, you, can, you can play basketball scores. It, it don't matter. God's going to take that prayer and bless it with all heart. I can. I can. There's a few things sweeter than hearing my wife pray for me. This sweet little voice that just. I mean, it's sexy. I get fired up hearing my voice. I just hear her talking to God on behalf of me. It's a sweet, sweet thing. I, I was uh, I preached on Sunday morning at our church uh, often, and you know it's a big church, a big, big, big sanctuary. And I get nervous and scared. I mean, I, I over overstudy, over prepare. I spend too much time, get too worried, get worked up about it. So I never sleep Saturday night because I'm so worried about the deal. And so uh, uh, last time I preached, I was this open, just nervous and restless. I'm not really. And she you know, uh, uh, finally said, "Hey." You know, we pray for you. I said, yeah, I was ready to pray. I mean, I was in the air She prayed. I mean, she prayed a beautiful prayer. What would happen to just rest with who he is, this message you gave him. He won't be worried about anything. He didn't have to impress anybody. It's happening. It's right. I haven't slept all night. You know what? I fell asleep before she even finished her prayer. <laughs> 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 here's, here's six real quick. Leave a legacy. Leave a legacy real quick. Leave a legacy. We talked about that a little bit last night. It's just... Just to leave a legacy. So the whole idea, hey, somebody's following us. I want to live in such a way. I want to be, you know, I, I love telling the story, and I've, I've, I've told the story before and how I got hurt. But uh, when I was a kid, I wanted to be like, uh, you know, a quarterback. Because I love quarterbacks. That's what I want to do. I love, I love watching an all time hero with Johnny Unitas. But the coolest guy was, was Joe Namath. Yeah. 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 Everything about him was cool. Mr. Wade, by the way, he looked, I mean, he looked so cool in his uniform. He had long hair, long sideburns, he wore white shoes, he wore pantyhose. I mean, he could do anything. <laughs> he would do that. He'd be in the huddle. He'd call a play. He'd break the huddle. I saw it from TV. He'd walk up behind the center. He would stop behind the center. He'd look around like this. And then he would do something. He would straighten his shoulder pads. He'd go. <laughs> and then he'd get on the center. I saw that and I thought, I, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I'm an eighth grade quarterback. Next day in practice, and then I call the thing, the baseball, walk up, I, I stop behind the center. I'm looking around. I don't even know what I'm looking at. <laughs> <laughs> but Joe did. So I'm looking around, and then all of a sudden, I'm doing <laughs> You know, there was a time in my life that's most little guys. I can't think you got one of those guys. Movie star, rock star, athlete, something like that. I trade places in the heart of But you know what? As I grew up and realized, most of those guys did sports well, but just didn't do life. Right. Didn't leave much behind except stats. I realized, hey, I really don't want to be like that. I want to be like that. Amen. He loved Jesus. He loved America. Served in Korea. Uh, he loved us. Inspired us. He loved my mom all those years. I'm going to leave a legacy. That's, uh, that's worth following. Here's number uh, uh, seven. Humble yourself. We've already talked about that. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. Before. Stay humble. You know, I'm glad I got I got God who humbles me. I got the Spirit that humbles me. I got a wife that humbles me. I want to be humble. Uh, I want to be, I've, I've been cocky. And I'm realizing I don't have very much to be cocky about. Really. That's the point. 
Good number eight, answer the bell. Answer the bell. It's, it's that idea, never give up. It's always too soon to throw in the towel. Bell sounds, I don't care what's going on, you answer the bell, you respond. It, it, it's the deal, I'm still here. I'm not good. I'm, you saw this. I'm in that, um, um, that uh, boxing match, uh, the throw uh, in the middle, mm -hmm. Joe Frazier, Muhammad Ali, the third fight, uh, world championship in the, uh, in the uh, Philippines, it's like 100 something degrees, it, it, the unit's off the charts. We go 14 rounds, 15 round fight, go 14 rounds. I mean, both guys said years later on class, of course, I now see this, that uh, they feel like death. They're exhausted, they're beat up, they got nothing left. After 14 rounds, the uh, Frazier's trainer realizes Joe, uh, his eyes, uh, he can't see, you know, he can't defend himself. He can't see. His face, his face is just a, a bloody mess. <clears throat> and he looks, he's standing behind Joe, looks across and sees Joe's family, his wife. And he realizes, you know what? I gotta stop this fight. Because Joe is gonna die out there. Because he knows if Joe hears the bell, you know, he's gonna answer the bell. He don't care if he said he's going after the fight. Mm -hmm. Man, you know, there's something about that. A guy who says, you know what? This is the hill I'm gonna die on right now. <coughs> and the thing is is sounding, I am going there and I'm finished this thing all the way to the end. Period. It don't matter what's happening, if I can explain it or not. I'm trusting Jesus, Lord. I'm, I'm hanging my, my everything on Jesus. And I'm going from all the way. I'm answering the bell. Here's number nine, the power of love. The greatest motivating factor in versus love. I told that story the other day about uh, us being in Texas. We were from back in the greatest moment of my life as an athlete. The thrill of that moment, though, was after the game, walking out of that locker room, Greatest moment of my life. And my dad walks up and my dad gives me a hug. <sighs> Ain't nothing like that. Having your hero there watching the play, do what you did, great moment, and there he gives you a hug of love, acceptance, of affirmation, pride, all that's in that hug. <clears throat> the year before that, we played TCU homecoming, 1973. We were behind again, 34 to 7. 11 minutes left to go in the game. We start another great comeback, scored three touchdowns, and we was incredible. It's now 34-28. We're still behind by six. But if we can get the ball, drive down and score, we kick that score, we can win this thing. We get the ball from a minute and a half left. Talk this amazing drive. I mean, we're hitting past it, getting down. Actually, get on the six-yard line, going in the score. No, I'm sorry. It, uh, that's the other thing. Fifteen-yard line, and going in the score. Twenty-seven seconds left. I had a guy with the pass in the flat. He catches the ball, and the film showed after the game. If he had just turned up the sideline, he would have walked in the end zone. We didn't want to get it. And for some stupid reason, he. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still in counseling for this. He <laughs> <laughs> passes the ball, he breaks in the middle, he's tackling bounds, clock's running. And we don't have timeout. 12 yards from the I'm talking like 15 seconds, 20 seconds left. I'm thinking, we've got to stop the clock. And we've got one more shot. So I'm just getting down the ball. Because now if you're down the ball, you just have to throw it down. I did get an extra throw pass out of bounds. So I get the ball, do a pass out of bounds, stop the clock, and I did stop the clock. Said it was fourth down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, if you're not football types, that is not a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's a major blunder. Yeah. I mean, six yards from victory. I got confused, thought it was third down, where's the clock? Yeah. Uh, uh, threw the game away. Cost me. Uh, you never lived. They walked off the football field with 40,000 pairs of eyes, and they're all looking at you, and they're all thinking unchristian things. <laughs> <laughs> all this moment in my life, and I failed. I blew it. My fault. I'm the goat. And everybody saw me do it. Major moment. You can't hide. Everybody's down on Jeffrey. I can't describe what it was like to walk out of that locker room. There's my dad. My dad walked up to me. Only my dad could. My hero. He comes up, and he just wraps me up. My head was on his shoulder weak, and I was so defeated and so disappointed. Here's my point. Greatest day of my life is that. We beat Texas, and I was a star. I got that hug. My worst day, when I blew, when I failed, when I'm going to go, when nobody else is thinking anything good about Jeffrey, I still got that hug. Amen. You know how powerful that is. 
you know what? Every, every man in the world wants this. Stand up. Everybody wants one of these. <laughs> you know how awesome that is? Or say, blood, fat. That's the way Jesus Christ loves us, man. Nothing you can do good makes him love you more. He loves you before he loves you already. Nothing bad you can do makes him love you less. He loves you just like you are. The point is, I've been loved in a way that's changed my life. Now, I'm going to love someone else. Change their life. Power of Last thing. So, as we look at all this stuff, all that we've said, everything, this whole weekend, the whole deal, all of it. So what do we do? Number 10. Proceed with power. We go. <clears throat> Therefore, go to the world. Doing what? Baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Teaching to preserve all things, our friend. Lo, I am with you in the age. We proceed with power. We go, man. We go. Not fight. Somebody said, not fighting for victory because we have the victory from victory. It's already been won. We're going to proceed with power. What power? The power of the name of Jesus Christ. The name is above every the name. The, the, the name is above every name. When, when that name is said, every knee in, will, will bow. Things in heaven, things in earth, and under it, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I'm going to that name. And I, I'm going to the authority because Jesus said in that great commission, uh, I've got all authority. Now I'm passing on to you as you go in my name, by my spirit. You go. It's the idea of Moses in Exodus five one. He's got nothing else except God. But man, he goes. One guy stands before Pharaoh. One man in the power of God against Pharaoh. That's what we're talking about. It's, it's, it's the idea. Hey, uh, I'm going to go back home and be Christ in me is enough. Period. And I can do all things for Christ. You know, I'm loving my wife. I'm raising my kids, loving them, modeling them. I'm being involved in my church. I'm loving my pastor. I'm being involved in all that. I'm going to serve. I'm going to be faithful. Even this is the If I'm in a job, it's the worst stinking hellhole imaginable. I'm going to be that light in that place. In fact, I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. I'm doing this thing right now. I love the story. I'm finished. We're almost through. You know, it's, uh, it's only a. Uh, 9.55 in Phoenix. Until it's not Phoenix. One story. I was on Phoenix time the whole time. I didn't know you were there. I love the story of, uh, of the ice pole. 1967. Yeah. Six, six, seven, New Year's Eve, actually. Uh, uh, Green Bay is playing a Dallas. Lambeau Field. NFL championship game. Field was frozen. It was like 15 degrees below zero. Uh, actual, actual temperature. The wind chill was like 49 degrees below zero. I saw this game live on TV. I've seen it on classic sports a hundred times. But, 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 but of course, at the end of the game, Dallas is ahead. Green Bay has the ball, the one yard line. 15 seconds left. As a timeout, Bart Starr is on the side with Lombardi. All they had to do, uh, time one more play. If they score, they win the championship. If they don't, Dallas wins. Jerry Kramer is the right offensive guard for the Packers. He's in the hole. He says this in his book, uh, Instant, he, uh, Instant Replay. He was exhausted. He was spent. He was done. And he was frozen. Uh, couldn't feel his fingers. Couldn't feel his feet. He was told. And he said, uh, uh, he, he was saying, saying he said, he said, I'm, I don't have enough for his feeling. And he's simply hoping that they call a play on the other side of the line. So I said he would have to make a, a block that they determined. And, uh, and lined up against him was uh, way from no, a death row pew. Well, Star comes back, calls the play, it's right over Jerry Crane. <laughs> he the center off the car. He realized, I gotta make a play, it's up to me. I gotta do this. He said, in a sense, he was overwhelmed uh, 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 until they broke the home. And he said, on the way to the last scrimmage, he said, he heard it. He heard 
50,000 Packer fans all screaming in He realized who's watching. He said he found the strength and he knew what he had. And he had a warmth. He said he had felt before the game. He said he got something. He reached way deep down. You've seen it. He made that block. They scored that touchdown. They win that championship. Why? Because he realized, man, I gotta go. I gotta, I, I gotta do this. I'm gonna do the point. There's so many things we need to do uh, in the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So many different things. You know what? At times we get overwhelmed. This, I don't know all this stuff. You know, we got to realize all the hopes for the heavens, that great crowd of witnesses about the Bible, they're all screaming, Go! Guys, on behalf of Jesus, let's do it, Go! And of course, all the hell says, No, don't do it! Right. Settle, compromise, get in, quit, get in the town! Hell says, Don't do what you're supposed to do! Heaven says, and all those most, my dad who's up there now says, Son, Go! In the name of Jesus, for his glory, Go! thinking like a child. Stop being like a child. And we looked at me and said, be a man in front of me and Tammy. It changed my life from that moment. And for five years, I've been faithful to serve the Lord. Amen. I've memorized many verses in my life over those five years. And now, you know, the way I live my life is those that know me that don't know God will come to know God. Amen. And that's how I've my life. So be men when you leave here today, because that's what we are. Amen. 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 Amen.
gentlemen, it is my pleasure to uh, introduce and start the presentation for our awards. And who is that Nick in the background playing that? <laughs> Every year we start off our men's. We'll keep the line on for you. <laughs> Every year we start off our men's retreat uh, with a with a golf tournament. Uh, we are pleased, and I want to thank the men who participated this year on behalf of the Jensen family. Uh, I want to thank you. Uh, this tournament is uh, is uh, on behalf of uh, Dr. David Jensen, uh, who has gone on to be with the Lord. But we we have this uh, tournament in his uh, memory and everything. I want to uh, start the presentation with some unique awards and. Uh, the first one is for the longest drive. The longest drive. This goes to our dear brother, Terry Big Dog Colburn. Give it up. Thank God for our pack. Here you are, brother. Let me get your picture here. Thank you, brother. Longest drive. Our next award. <laughs> I'm part here. <laughs> this is the closest to the pin on a par three. Rig. Believe it or not, huh? believe it or not, it goes to Doug. I ain't got nothing to say. No. <laughs> It's really rigged. Yeah. Yeah. Break I give God the credit. Amen. I uh, I want now to uh, introduce our, our tournament winners. Okay. Uh, this is a two man scramble. Two man best ball. Our winners this year are Jeff Lucas, West Ham. Come on up. Dozens. Okay. All right. 
Yeah. And, so and we're gonna we're gonna, gonna eat to ours. We're gonna eat ours. Wasn't stated in the rules. We had we had a boat crew. <laughs> that, uh, they just went out and got on top of all of them and tore them up. So what we're gonna do today, brother Tim and brother Don, come on up. We have a we have an award. I didn't get this finish. Get up, Don Morris. Come on up. Don Morris, get up there, boy. See, when we have the fish fry, we're gonna we're gonna embarrass you. <laughs> 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 so, you guys are gonna have a little fun here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Smile, I got it. Oh, yeah. What time's the fish fry? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what time's the fish fry? Yeah, exactly. Now for the next, the next board, <laughs> this is for the longest, the longest fish. Now for, for the, the youth out here that said that we said that it was only for a fish that was edible. Well, a carp is edible. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> a carp was caught by Brother Barry Carter. <laughs> Alan, you can't count fish that only Cajuns eat. How big was it? It was about freshwater alligator. It was that long. I, I witnessed that fish. Now, for the for the most fish, I caught five. You caught five. I've won it before. Come on up. 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 Uh, I want to thank you all 
uh, from the bottom of my heart because uh, you guys have truly made this a ministry uh, incredible to be a part of. And uh, I love you guys. Um, <clears throat> also, and before we go, I, I want to make sure that nobody leaves. Um, we have two of the greatest pastors Amen. Amen. Uh, that we could uh, ask for. Men of God, men who are committed to the Word of God and committed to the people uh, in our church, uh, tirelessly giving of themselves, not thinking of themselves, but pouring out um, Christ within them to each and every person. And before we leave, I'm going to ask both of you uh, to come down here because we want to lay hands on you and pray for you and, and ask God to just uh, multiply this ministry and multiply the work that he's doing in and through uh, each of you. So thank you. Um, all right. I, I do have some housekeeping stuff that I, I want to talk to you all about. Uh, one, if you still have your name tags and your keys, uh, please, uh, there's baskets over by where Ron and Pete is. And, and let me say this, because I met, did not mention Ron, but Ron really administratively Amen. does everything. Amen. And he is, he is a blessing, uh, to us. I mean, he just does everything. Um, also, uh, we are required uh, throughout contract, please clean this place up. Let's stack the chairs up on the side. Uh, before I think they can leave the chairs. Are you sure? Uh, okay. And all the bottles and cans. <clears throat> but pick up all, all the mess. Just pick it up around. I mean, we don't. I'm not going to ask anybody to vacuum. Uh, but just pick everything up. Make make the place look halfway decent. Um, also, if you have not settled on on uh, money, uh, please see Ron before you leave so that you can settle up. If you owe some money, uh, please let's get that done uh, as well. Um, also. Um, we had an incredible weekend of worship with some of the greatest musicians that we've ever had. 